everyone, artist Dana Haynes here. The last week I've been downloading my original artwork from DeviantArt, repairing a database, blah blah blah. Anyway, I ran across something. Since we are on the topic of protecting your artwork, I wanted to show you why I don't feel I can share any for free anymore. Now I ran across stuff that I'd made 21 some odd years ago when I was learning to draw on a graphics table and learning software and all that stuff. And I didn't think it would be a big deal to hand it out for free. Basically I did this on my site to drive traffic to my site because content is key, artwork is content, and it drives traffic to you. And it made me feel good to, to give parents and kids something to do and 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 I was learning and people could kind of follow my progress on the artwork part of it so I didn't mind and back then you couldn't protect your artwork anyway so I got to the part where I'd saved all these worksheets that I did and I copyrighted them put the copyright symbol on there and everything else you know to protect them as best I could and I gave them away on Pinterest, you know, to drive traffic to my site. I shared the links on social media, driving traffic back to, to my artwork so they could see other stuff and get something for free. And I don't mind contributing to the community, but it was specifically for parents and kids. In individual use. I enjoy making kids happy. That's how I ended up in portrait photography to begin with. And I didn't mind parents using it or even daycare providers or even a teacher or something, you know. And some websites had downloaded them and put them on their website. Now I normally don't give a Creative Commons license unless somebody pays for the download because they're going to use it commercially. A Creative Commons license is basically allowing somebody else to use your work and you can say whether they, use, they can use it commercially or you allow modifications. And I do this with stock photography, but I didn't think I had actually set these worksheets to that because I intended them for parents. So here I am, I'm, I'm getting to this part where I'm downloading this and updating stuff and decided to check and see how things were going. I hadn't really looked at this in years since I uploaded it a decade ago. I went to see how my stuff was doing. Basically, I review my stuff every so often. How's it doing in Google? Yep, it's all there. Looks good. Checking it out. And then I saw something. It brought up all those old feelings 20 years ago, 21 years ago, when I was struggling to make it as an artist and learn all this stuff and get it off the ground and I was not making anything doing it. So at first I was getting upset because some of this was on the other websites. Then I took a look at this one and somebody had cropped the copyright off of it. Or so I thought, I went and checked it out, and they had miraculously actually left it on there. So I calmed myself down again, and it's like, you're going through baggage from 20 years ago, let it go. <laughs> Before I blew up about it, I went and checked what did I actually check off on my com uh, Creative Commons. And lo and behold, yeah, I actually did give them permission to do it. But I didn't charge them for it. So I was a little, well, that's not right. In 
fact, it was something that I actually really had already done for five years and hadn't gotten paid. So, you know, all that baggage of, you know, putting that much effort into a failed project, all the trauma came back up. There was no access to merchants' accounts. They were really exp expensive to get, you know, credit card, card processing. You know, they were still trying to figure out how people could download directly. It was just a very frustrating time. You learned all this stuff, but yet, what are you going to do with it once you, you actually created it and, you know, people weren't valuing it and they were stealing it and they were just, you know, they wouldn't give you credit where credit was due. They wouldn't link to you. And the message I kept getting out of it is I didn't deserve to be paid as an artist. People did not value art. I went through all the self-doubt artists go through. Can I make it? And I felt pressured. You know, my husband was, what's going on here? Why can't you make this big money? And me just going because of this, this, and him looking at me like I'm crazy because he doesn't understand what I'm talking about. So the reason I'm sharing this is basically people don't understand the, the frustration level that digital artists have. <laughs> and back then it did get me to a point, well, you know, okay, you know, there's no money in this. There's, give up on your dreams. You're, it's never going to happen because people just don't, they're not going to pay you to do art. And when I took the photography job, managing the studio, it finally validated art has value, you are worth your money, and people paid me, and they paid me well. So I had to be taught by others to value what I could actually do. My bosses, my mentors, you know, all these other people know it's worth it, and you're learning, and you're doing better, and you're getting, and my sales showed that. I had to actually go back, pull myself out of the internet completely, digital art, all of it, and put myself in a brick and mortar situation to understand that what I could do had value and was worth something. It taught me to value my art and my skills and my experience and you know all the years that I put in for nothing weren't for nothing. And so going back to somebody feeling like somebody was doing that to me again was offensive. It was offensive because, you know, I put this out there for free for parents with a certain intent, not thinking about this and letting it lay around for, what, a decade? Um, and people using it commercially. And they're probably not making anything and they didn't do anything wrong because they had the like. But what I've learned is if I don't charge people for stuff, they don't value. They do just take. And they do things they shouldn't do, like strip copyright and stuff like that, which is illegal, by the way. <laughs> you know, so now that I do know my true value, what I can really make, and the fear isn't there, and I'm not beating myself up and you know trying to get the top of this or that or staying I don't care about any of that anymore I I value it I learned if you respect yourself others respect you and if you value it they're going to value it and it's not a big deal to ask for a buck for somebody to download something you know just to show their respect that you put these years of experience into something and if they can't and they expect it for free, then I'm not the person they should be working with because I do know what... So if there's anything that I really want people to take away from this, this isn't how great I am, it's that your art is valuable. And even if you're starting out, it is. You know, don't just put it out there and let people take it. They expect to pay a little bit. It's a disservice to other artists if you just put it out there for free because then people expect stuff for free and that's just not the way the world works. People have to eat, they have to feed their, 
families, put a roof over their head, and everything else. It's not unreasonable to ask to be paid. What's unreasonable is for somebody to expect you to give them something for free when you barely even know them or don't know them at all. In the studio, I used to call them something for nothings, and it was only a very few people that did this, and you can't let them rule, because the majority are respectful, respect what you do, and grateful for your services. And that doesn't mean you ignore them or get snotty with them. I've seen some photographers just, you know, oh, I'm just run through a session with them and not pay attention to them and, you know, be rude with them. There's Eventually, they may make some money and become one of your biggest fans and customers. But you got to set the boundaries. I charge. I get paid. I have a livelihood doing this. So they tend to look at you as a professional when you treat it like a professional would. And just putting it out there for free is not doing that. So I'm not saying you can't have a giveaway. You know, I did VIPing and I would pull people in and do sessions for free just to show them what I could do. But I knew they would purchase because I'm good at what I do. But I had to go through the experience of people validating my work and, you know, me seeing firsthand with my own eyes, yes, they like it, they love it, they're going to purchase it before it really set in not to do that. In the studio I worked for, it did give away a free item for coming in, and I have no problem doing that, and I want to do that with the parents and give back to the community because the experience that I gained doing it in the first place was awesome. But in the same breath, you have people that are just going to take it, they're going to post it on a website, they're going to mess with it, and I don't like my stuff out in the comments, period. You know, I don't put it out there until it's paid for. My studio made 130 k and the area made over 520000 So, you know, there you have to be smart about this. I While I want to give something to the parents, I'm going to have to protect myself. So I'm going to go through and edit these and charge for the, a small fee for the downloads. It really isn't important to me whether people buy it or not. Um, the importance is that I set my boundaries and that I remind myself that, yes, I have that. That just because I'm an artist doesn't mean I don't deserve to be paid. And you should be paid for your work and effort, too. It doesn't have to be a lot, but, you know, as you go, you, you start to realize, hey, I'm worth way more than I'm charging. And if you show that to others, they will respect it. They will respect you. They will see you more as a professional, not just an amateur, you know. And the way I did it in the studio is create it, let them view it without being able to take it and do anything with it, and then pay for it. If they didn't pay for it, they didn't get it. And that's the way it works. And that's the way it has to work online as well. So you have to protect yourself. Doing digital art and being online as an artist has gotten so much better than it was. But you have to combine that with a brick and mortar attitude that I don't work for free. So the takeaway from this is I want you to respect yourself. I want you to have boundaries. I want you to be professional and understand, yes, you deserve to eat. And when you do these things, people respect your boundaries and your income will go up. Self-doubt is something every artist or photographer or anybody that has had an art career has to overcome. And setting those boundaries is charging. And saying, hey, I have to make a living. Or I'm going to go out of business and not be able to provide this service for you. Plain and simple. And you don't have to say that to your customers, but you need to know that deep down that you have to sustain yourself and set these boundaries and know that you have to have an income. If you want to do art for a living, you have to set your boundaries. You can't get drugged back to when you were 
in self-doubt mode or felt like the whole world was ganging up on you and didn't want to pay you, you if you stay professional, set those boundaries, you can have one. So I hope my trauma today helped you out a little bit, gave you a pep talk. Be sure to like and comment below, let me know what you think, and go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. You can ring my bell so you get it in your inbox. The next video is going to be about storing your artwork, where's the best places for it. There was a question about that, how to's, who you can trust, who you can't, things you need to be aware of when you're uploading your artwork. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.